Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Business One. We are now on Chapter 10, Motivating Employees. Very, very important topic. Uh, if you don't have motivated employees, you will definitely not find success. Uh, learning objectives, explain Taylor's theory of scientific management, describe the Hawthorne studies and their significance in management, identify the levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, distinguish between the motivation motivators uh, and hygiene factors identified by Hertzberg, differentiate among theory X, theory Y, and theory Z, explain the key principles of goal setting, expectancy reinforcement equity theories, show how managers put motivation theories into action, and show how managers uh, personalize motivation strategies to appeal to employees across the globe and across generations, right? Dealing with uh, baby boomers all the way to millennials. Uh, be sure to read the story, uh, Getting to Know David Novak. Uh, he is executive chairman of Yum Brands. If you don't know Yum Brands, uh, they have Pizza Hut, KFC, uh, Pepsi, uh, Cola, right? So uh, they're, they're obviously doing big things. Uh, but uh, check check him out, and, and there's some great things in that article about him. Uh, so let's talk about motivation first and foremost. Uh, our intrinsic rewards and extrinsic rewards are, are the two different types of rewards that you receive. So are you motivated by uh, a sense of you know, doing the right thing, getting things completed, or are you motivated simply by uh, bonuses? So an intrinsic reward is a personal satisfaction you feel uh, when you perform well at, and complete goals, right? So I got this job done. Even though nobody's sending me a bonus or a check or anything, I still feel good about the fact that I got it done in the uh, the expected time that was needed to be completed. An extrinsic reward. So remember, internal, extrinsic, is, internal is intrinsic, external is extrinsic. So N is internal, X is external. Extrinsic reward is given to you by someone else. Recognition for good work. It could be pay increases uh, and promotions are uh, extrinsic rewards, right? So typically, if it's something tangible that you could touch, like some money, uh, then it's going to be extrinsic. But if, the, if it's that warm and fuzzy feeling inside about doing great things with what you do in your job, that's intrinsic. Uh, and there's a definition right there on page 271, something given to you by someone else's recognition for good work, uh, include uh, pay increases, praise, and promotion. Scientific management is the studying of uh, workers to find the most efficient way of doing things and then teaching people those techniques, right? So we want to see who's got the best method. Or if nobody has the best, best method, then let's uh, create the best method and then teach it to everyone else. That's scientific management. Uh, and UPS does a great job of that. They tell drivers how to get out of their trucks, how fast to walk, and how many packages to pick up and deliver a day, and even how to hold their keys. Can you see how UPS follows? the principles of scientific management by teaching people the one best way to perform each task. You say, well, how do they come up with these best ways? They actually took trucks, put them in a, in a building, and then they had people trained within those trucks. They timed everything. So yeah, the UPS definitely does know what they're, what they're talking about. So uh, those time motion studies that scientific management can definitely come in, in handy. Um, so believing different materials uh, call for shovels, so he proceeded to in invent a wide variety of shape sizes shovels right so think about that you know they say uh invention is a or um necessity is a motherhood of invention um so it output over time which were called time motion studies these motion studies uh, were studies on tasks performed in a job and the time needed for each, right? So it just simply means that we're going to take a stopwatch, we're going to see how long it takes and say, oh, you know what? Let's take out task C because it's not really uh, required. Uh, let's put in uh, task A and B, but let's take C out and let's see how it goes. Here's a definition for that. So time motion studies, uh, Frederick Taylor, he's the one responsible for that. Uh, tasks must be performed to a complete job and time uh, management uh, needed uh, to do each task, right? So uh, we have to figure out how much time is needed or included in completing a task and and then we can you know kind of say okay we need to reduce reduce it by 15 seconds let's take out step c uh principle of motion economy uh this is by frank and lillian gilbreth uh that every job can be broken down into series of elementary motions right so you just break it up in chunks just like an assembly line uh and then we go from there so elton mayo and the hawthorne studies uh you see that there's a video posted about that. Uh, Hawthorne studies basically an electric company, and uh, they turned down the lights and they did better. They turned up the lights and they did better. But the thing is, anything that they did would have made them perform better because of the fact that they're just uh, getting attention, right? If you're getting attention, people are watching you, know they're watching you, then you're going to perform well.
right? No one's going to say, oh, well, so-and-so is coming here to evaluate you, and then you're just going to have a terrible day, right? You're going to be on your P's and Q's, and you're going to do your best. Uh, and people have to know and understand that. That would, you know, when those people leave, do they act and perform the same way? Uh, so Hawthorne effect uh, refers to people's tendency to behave differently when they know that they are being studied. Just like those shows like a, a Big Brother or, you know, real world stuff like that. It's not exactly real world. It's as real as you can get knowing that a TV camera is five feet away and pointing in your face and everybody in the world is going to see exactly what you did. So uh, just a little bit different than like a uh, like a John Keonis on uh, what would you do and when then people when people catch you on those those hidden cameras that that you didn't know were there. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, whose level are so these are different levels that he has. So and, and as you go down the list, you'll see certain ones are most important. Typically, the ones at the not typically, but the ones at the top of the list. Uh, physiological needs, uh, basic survival needs such as uh, food, water, and shelter. Right, you need those things to survive. Safety needs, the need to feel secure at work and home. Right, you don't want to you know go outside and it's you know a civil war. Uh, social needs, the need uh, to feel loved, accepted, and part of the group. Uh, that's big for some, not so big for others. Esteem needs is a need for recognition and acknowledgement from others, as well as uh, self-respect and a sense of uh, status or importance. And last but not least, self-actualization needs, uh, the need to develop to one's fullest potential. Obviously, that's, uh, you know, something that we all strive for, but uh, typically none of us get to our, our fullest, fullest potential uh, within a lifetime. You'll get towards your full potential, but uh, that self-actualization is like, that's like at the top of the mountain when you're like, oh, and you're, and you're you know, levitating and meditating at the same time and there's a pyramid you know nice uh, visual diagram for that for you make sure that you uh, know exactly how, how it moves um, so what creates enthusiasm for workers and makes them uh, work to the full potential these are the most important factors sense of achievement earned recognition right so sense of achievement I feel like I did great earned earned recognition people recognize me and I earned it interest in the work itself right if you you know if you just hate the job you know you're not going to be too happy and perform too well Opportunity for growth, so the ability to grow within the company, get promoted, and opportunity for advancement uh, to continue to get promoted, get to different positions, get a level and a higher pay grade. Importance of responsibility, like, you know, is what I'm doing not something that, that's, you know, a big deal, or is it really a big deal and people are counting on me to do a great job? Peer and group relationships, uh, pay, supervisors, fairness. A lot of people, you know, they can. They, even if you are being fair and they think you're not, then the perception is reality that that you're not being fair to them. Company policies and rules, status, job security, supervisors, friendliness, and working conditions all involved. Uh, motivators. So let's talk about motivators and hygiene factors. Uh, so motivators, these factors can be used to motivate workers. Work itself, achievement, recognition, responsibility, growth, and advancement. Now, hygiene factors are a little bit different, right? So I teach on campus classes as well, and I always tell them, I say, look, we walk in the classroom, the air conditioner's on, the seats are there, it's not a problem. It's a hygiene factor. It's great. They're supposed to be there. But if you walk into that room and those seats are not there and the air conditioner's off and it's blazing, it's 100 degrees in the classroom, then you are going to have a problem with that. Uh, but you n you never walk into the classroom and say, hey, I'm so, I'm so gracious that we have seats here and that we have air conditioning. It's not because you expect for it to be there. That's a hygiene factor. Uh, these factors can cause dissatisfaction, but changing them will have little motivational effect, right? Uh, so I put in the, t the chairs. It, you, they weren't there this week. Then they are there the next week. You're not going to come there and say, oh, I'm so happy that the chairs are back. Uh, company policy and administration, supervision, working conditions, interpersonal relations, uh, salary status, and job security, all under hygiene or maintenance factors. All right, so comparison of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Hertzberg's theory of uh, factors. So I want you guys, uh, I'm not going to do that part for you, but just, you know, go to page uh, 276, check that out, and look at the difference between Maslow and Hertzberg. Now, I'd say either one is right, uh, but look at what you can, you know, what you can learn from both. I go over the test prep. Uh, be sure to answer those questions. Uh, of course, as always, you have a quiz this week. Uh, theory X. So you have Theory X managers, you have Theory Y managers. But remember, like I tell everybody, you have to have a little Theory X and a little Theory Y in you because both are useful at different times. Now, I would want you to be more of a Theory Y than a Theory X person, and you'll see why. So Theory X. Uh, they believe that the average person dislikes work and will avoid it if possible. Uh, because of this dislike, uh, most will be most 
will be forced, controlled, directed, or threatened. That right, they say that you need that if your theory X. Uh, with punishment to make them put forth the effort to achieve the organizational goals. Uh, the average worker prefers uh, to be directed, wishes to avoid responsibility, and has relatively little ambition and wants security, right? That's what, you know, they sound like a Debbie Downer, but this is what Theory X uh, thinks. Uh, primary motiva motivators and, uh, are fear and punishment, right? Where I'm afraid that Demetrius is going to come and he's going to punish me and eventually I'll lose my job. Uh, before we go to Theory Y, let's read about Theory X over here on the side. It says, Theory X managers don't live to make their employees happy. For example, Charlie Ergen, uh, the founder and chairman of Dish Networks, makes employees work long hours, a whole lot of mandatory overtime with few paid holidays. Employees describe the Ergen-created company uh, culture as one of uh, condescen uh, condescension and distrust. Yet, the company's earnings have consistently beat market expectations. Would you prefer to work as Theory X or Theory Y manager? Now, let's see what Theory Y is before you make that decision. Um, I would definitely want to be more Theory Y, but there are there is a time and a place for a little bit of the traits in Theory X. Uh, Theory Y makes entirely different assumptions about people. They say most people like work. It's as natural as rest or pay, uh, rest or play. Uh, most people naturally work towards goals uh, to which they are committed. The depth of a person's commitment to goals depend on the perceived rewards of achieving them. Uh, under certain conditions, most people not only accept but also seek responsibility. People are capable of using a high, a relatively high degree of imagination, creativity, and cleverness to solve problems. In industry, uh, the average person's intellectual potential is only partially realized, and people are motivated by a variety of rewards. Each worker is stimulated by a reward unique to him or her, such as time off, money, recognition, and so on, right? Time off may be more important to me than recognition or money, and maybe money is more important, and maybe recognition is more important to some people. I've got, I've got plenty of money, but I've got no recognition, uh, right? So you see the big difference between a Theory X and a Theory Y manager. Uh, <clears throat> so for empowerment to be a real motivator, and that means giving people the power and the ability to do things within the company, management should follow it three steps. Find out what people think the problems in the organizations are. Right? Easier said than done, but you need to find out what the people think the problems are. Let them design the solution. So, hey, you know what? This is what's wrong. See if you can come up with a solution, and let's go from there. Get out of the way and let them put up solutions uh, into action, put their solutions into action. And I've actually had to get the, get out of the way of people before, uh, working with people thinking, you know, just not having the greatest opinion of how they're going to react or respond in a situation that they're in, and just been like, hey, you know what, I'll take it over and do it myself. But a lot of times you have to empower and enable people the uh, possibilities and opportunities to do great things on their own. Uh, so Google. Google has its own state of our gym, resistance swimming, pool to help employees work off the extra pounds, large and colorful exercise balls are everywhere, remind employees uh, to take care of their bodies. Can you think of any examples uh, of a kind of holistic concern for employees? Uh, well, the, the Googles of the earth are not very, very common, but they, they, may, they give you free breakfast, lunch, and dinner, free candy, free espresso, everything's free, right? So there's no reason for you to fail. You can do your laundry there. There's no reason for you to, to fail in that in such a scenario. It's there only a reason for you to succeed. If you fail there, it's your own fault because you just couldn't cut the much mustard. <clears throat> yeah, skip over theory Z and just go to here, right? Uh, so you see here we have type A, which is American, type Z is a modified American, and type J uh, just for, for Japanese. So theory Z, a blend of American and Japanese management approaches, right? So type Z uh, right here. So long-term employment, collective decision-making, individual responsibility, slow evaluation and promotion, implicit and formal control with explicit formalized control, and moderately specialized career paths, and holistic concern for employees, including family. Right. Uh, you know, so you have to know and understand the difference between these different types uh, of of managers. Uh, but know that each one does not have the clue and the solution for everything and everybody.
And here's how they go. There's theory X, theory Y. We already went over those two. Theory Z. Uh, employment involvement is key to increase pro productivity, right? So we need for them to be involved in order to increase their productivity. Employee control is implied and informal. Employees prefer to share responsibility and decision making. Employees perform better in environments that foster trust and cooperation. Employees uh, guaranteed employment will accept slow evaluations and promotion. All right, so yeah, I just have to know. I want you to stop, take a you know long pause, and make sure that you know and understand the difference between theory X, theory Y, and theory Z. All right. A uh, goal setting theory. This is the idea that setting ambitious uh, but attainable goals. So remember, smart goals uh, can motivate workers and improve performance if their goals are accepted, accompanied by feedback, and facilitated by organizational conditions. Right. So if it's a goal that's attainable, hey, I'm going to get excited. I'm going to go after it. I have goals that are attainable that you know are attached to certain monetary features. Hey, I'm going to go after them. Uh, management by objectives, you always see uh, Peter Drucker uh, written here, is a system of goal setting and implementation. Uh, it involves a cycle of discussion, review, and evaluation of objectives among top and mid-level managers, uh, supervisors, and employees. All right. All about Peter Drucker. Pr Drucker. Uh, the expectancy theory, uh, there's a video on that as well. There's Victor Vroom's theory that the amount of effort employees exert on a specific task depends on their expectations of the outcomes, right? If my expectation is that you're going to give me some movie tickets, then you know what? Uh, whatever it is, I'm probably not going to do it. But if, if my expectation is that you're going to give me $20,000, then that changes things. Uh, so... Expectancy theory, the amount of effort employees can exert on a task depends on their expectations of the outcome. So tasks, uh, can I accomplish the task? If you say no, then you're not motivated, right? Outcome is a reward worth it, right? And if you say no, then you're not involved. But if you say yes, then you are motivated. Right. Some people say, hey, you know what, I only I get a small minuscule minuscule raise and it's just not worth it to me. Uh, <clears throat> they suggested that managers follow five steps to impl improve employee performance. Determine what rewards the, uh, the employee values, right? So what do you value? Uh, determine each uh, employee's desired performance standard. Ensure that the performance standards are attainable, right? Smart goals, they have to be specific, measurable, attainable. Uh, guarantee rewards tied to performance, right? Uh, you know, you want somebody to perform well, uh, guarantee that some awards, awards will be there. Uh, be certain that employees consider the rewards adequate. If they don't care about the re rewards, then, uh, it's no use of you, you know, putting them out there. <clears throat> The reinforcement theory, theory that the positive and negative reinforcers motivate a person to behave in certain ways, which is very true. So if it's positive, it may behave you, may work you to behave one way. If it's negative, it may, you know, push you to behave a, a different way. Uh, so here's the add stimuli and subtract stimuli. Uh, so increased behavior, positive reinforcement. Jill gets praise, the reinforcement added. Uh, for turning in her reports on time, target behavior increases, right? So if I get praised for something, you know what? I'm going to keep doing it over and over again. Decreased behavior is punishment. Jack gets written up uh, by the punisher for turning in his reports late. Target behavior is that it decreases. Uh, if you want to subtract now on the, stimu the stimuli, on the other hand, so negative reinforcement, Jack is on probation. Punishment that will be review, review, removed until such time he can uh, turn in three reports on time, uh, the target behavior uh, to increase. And in extinction, Jill does not get praise uh, when her reports are turned in late, uh, no matter how well they are done, right? So uh, you Everybody's different, right? So you have to read that again. Jill does not get praise uh, when her reports are turned in late, right? So you, you didn't turn it in on time, then you're definitely not going to get praise for them because then everybody else will now believe that it's okay to turn the things in a little bit late. Uh, equity theory, like I said, about being equitable between your employees or even your colleagues is, is a key thing. Uh, the idea that employees try to maintain equity between inputs and outputs uh, compared to other similar uh, positions, right? <clears throat> More test prep, be sure to review that, help you out on your quizzes, uh, which all roll up into your test as well. Uh, then you want to put theory into action, and all of us should know that, you know, you want to put theory into action and not just have it be theory, something that's sitting there, you can read it in a book, but you cannot apply and it's not going to help you out.
these three are somewhat combined uh, because they're ways that you treat a certain job, tr treat a certain position. Job enrichment is a po motivational strategy that emphasizes motivating the worker through the job itself, right? Uh, so I want to motivate that individual through the particular job that they currently have. Job enlargement, a little bit different. Now we're going to increase your responsibilities. Uh, job en en enrichment strategy that involves combining a series of tasks into one challenging and interesting assignment. Job rotation, a great company that did this. I interviewed with them. Didn't do well, didn't get the jobs quite some time ago, but they did job rotation. Sometimes you could be the receptionist, other times you could be working in the warehouse. Uh, so job rotation is job uh, enrichment strategy that involves motivating employees from one job uh, to another, right? Uh, so, you know, you're doing a job, you're great at it, but then they say, hey, now we want to pull you over here to do this job. Now we need you to go through the learning curve, learn it, and then do just do just as good as you did on the other one, uh, which is, you know, quite possible. That if you get somebody and they're good, they're just going to be good. <clears throat> job rotation also makes work more interesting and motivating by employees from one job to another, right? So it makes it kind of, you know, not not as monotonous, uh, helps people to learn the organization in its entirety. Um, I really like the program. <clears throat> so they say motivation through open communication, right? You have to communicate when? Early and often. Right. So use affecting effective questioning techniques, remove barriers to open communication. Right. If there are barriers there. Break them down, move them out the way. Avoid vague and ambiguous communication. Uh, make it easy to communicate. Right. So uh, it's so funny. Um, <clears throat> project manager I used to work with and there were two people. They were sitting in the same cubicle aisle and they were just emailing back and forth between each other, uh, you know, with some not so kind words. And he's like, hey, stand up, introduce yourself and have a conversation instead of emailing to that individual. Uh, so you want to remove barriers to open communication, separate offices, parking areas, bathrooms and dining rooms for managers only uh, set up. Uh, you want to avoid uh, vague and ambiguous communication, make it easy to communicate, make it, you know, words and things that people know and that they understand. And you also want to make sure that you ask employees what is important to them, right? So if I buy you some movie tickets and I say this is your reward and you really hate the movies, then it's not important to them and it's just, it's irrelevant. It's just like me giving you a piece of trash. <clears throat> All right, so when is social media too social? Uh, I want you guys to review that because uh, uh, social media is something that definitely applies to our, our work environment, our personal environment now. So I want you guys to be sure to uh, read that. Uh, here are just a few examples of ways managers have raised employee spirits without raising paychecks because there are ways to make people uh, you know, happy and excited. Uh, when we hit our, our goals for the month, I actually take my... Um, my team out to, to lunch and we have a good time. You know, I'm not so pressed like everybody get back to work. I'm just like, let's just sit down. Let's just have a nice lunch together. Right. Sing Kumbaya, hold hands and uh, enjoy a meal before we get back to the monotony of work. A Los Angeles law firm sent 400 employees and their families to Disneyland for the day. FedEx office did something similar, but it sent high achieving employees to Disneyland and put the company's top executives in employees place while they were gone. And I've actually seen something like that uh, done before. And these top executives did not know how to answer the phones. And it was, it was crazy, but the employees have fun. Give more media offers, uh, perks uh, like Netflix and XM uh, satellite radio memberships also encourages participation in its smile and give program. Did that before at a different company, uh, which, uh, uh, gives employees three paid days off uh, to work for a nonprofit of their choice, which is great organization that I, I work for does the same thing. Uh, while Disney World offers more than 200 employee recognition programs, uh, Moritz Inc. in Fenton, Missouri has a thanks a bunch program that gives flowers to selected employees in appreciation of job well done. Hewlett Packard uh, bestows its golden banana award for a job well done. Uh, the award started when an engineer burst into his manager's office saying he found the solution to a long-standing problem. In his haste to find something uh, to give uh, the employee to show his appreciation, the manager grabbed a banana from his lunch and said, Well done. Congratulations. Uh, the banana, golden banana is now one of the most prestigious honors given to inventive HP employees. And it's so funny how like a simple story like that will just turn into uh, something that, that stands the test of time. 
uh, personalizing motivation, right? So, you know, maybe you're writing a heartfelt note to somebody specifically about what they did and they can tell that's not just a form note that you sent to everybody, but it's something that you sent specifically to them. It does make a difference. Uh, going up and, uh, against the heavyweights, uh, be sure to read that as well. They have such good, uh, you know, articles in these, in these textbooks, uh, uh, it's funny, you know, I, but I say that from a different perspective. I say it from the perspective of my work perspective, you know, because I, you know, I'm out there working in the corporate field and I'm saying, Hey, they're, they're touching on the key points that you really need to know on how you need to turn a corner and the things that you need to do in order to be successful in that type of marketing place and that type of marketplace. <clears throat> uh, beyond just knowing cross cultural differences, I want you to read that as well. So it doesn't. It it helps to know, you know, the cultural differences and everything like that. But you need to know a little bit more uh, than that if you want to be successful uh, globally. Uh, uh, millennials tend to be skeptical, outspoken and image driven, as well as adaptable tech savvy employees with a sense of fun and tolerance. It is important for managers uh, of all ages to be aware that employees of different generations communicate differently. Right. So uh, baby boomers, they're like, hey, come in. Put your head down. You work, 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 work. You'll get promoted. Bam. Baby uh, uh, millennials are like, hey, you know, I feel like I'm better than John, even though John's been here 30 years. I don't feel like sitting on the pine or sitting on the bench for this amount of time. I think I need John's job. Right. So millennials, they just step right to it. But, you know, people always say, oh, they this and they that. And I say, you know what? You're the ones who made the millennials like this because this is what you, you know, told them in the, in their classes and management, things like that, that you, you know, you have to speak up and you have to ask for it. And, uh, you know, so, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you, what you're looking for. Uh, so Gary Kelly, uh, CEO of Southwest Airlines shocked his coworkers the year, uh, he showed up at the company Halloween party just as Gene Simmons. Frontman for the rock group Kiss. Now, each year, uh, his, uh, in his blogs, he has Southwest employees to suggest his next costume. All right. So just think about that. Something that just made things just fun. It's like, Hey, you know, check this guy out. He's, he's down. He's working with us and he's, he's uh, participating and people really do love it. Uh, more test prep questions. Be sure to review them as always. Not that you don't review everything else in the whole book, but I'll uh, be sure to review the test prep questions. And that's it, uh, for chapter 10. This is, uh, the summary. Be sure to go over the summary because the summary is very, very important. Ties up the loose ends, sums up everything that we've gone over for the entire chapter. Uh, so you just have your quiz this week and then uh, we move forward from there. And remember, we're only going up to, I believe, 16 chapters. Uh, so you got about six more to go and uh, you'll be home free. So as always, I want all of you to have a good day and a great week.